What's up, YouTube? This is MathWiz97, and welcome back to my SmackDown vs. Raw 2008 General Manager mode. We are coming off the Royal Rumble pay-per-view, and some things are going on. We're trying to get the maximum uh, potential out of this rivalry by putting them in another match this week, just to try to carry us over from the Royal Rumble. I mean, honestly, not that we're going to win the GM of the Year award. There's really no point in even trying anymore. I can just really wing it and do whatever right now. Um... Which is kind of why I'm just going to let Edge's contract expire because he wants a title shot and um, that's not really going to factor into the plans that I currently have. Him getting another world title match, so he's just not going to get one. And Ed, I mean, Punk is just tired of losing, so that could be easily fixed, but he might also ask for a title shot somewhere in there. Uh, and he's not in a rivalry, so I can let his contract wind down, that's fine. We will lose this rivalry, but I can put that back together or or not I mean it really doesn't at this point it really doesn't matter but the plan is still to try to make a trade for Randy Orton at some point I'm not in an like I'm not in a rush to make it happen honestly uh, no way out if we maybe had like an edge versus Snitsky match there or maybe Orton appeared at no way out that I think would be fine because then we can start to build up to the tag, uh, like a tag title match with Sabu and Sandman or something. And that would lead up to WrestleMania. So really it's just in like the final stretch that if I'm gonna get Orton, I wanna try to wait until closer to the very end. Cause that would just be the end game rather than a, a long term, or I guess there really is no long term, we're at the end of January, but a short term business decision. So we have a bunch of matches here that I made uh, after I recorded the last episode, and I don't remember exactly why I did them, but they are this way, because I knew that if, usually, like, if I take a break between recordings and then try to book matches, I have no clue what's going on, uh, which is why these are all set up, just trying to keep the rivalries going, except for Edge Snitsky, because that's obviously going to end when Edge's contract expires, so I uh, just have Snitsky in a handicap match, he's just going to beat the crap out of Chris Masters and Carlito. And Edge is going to team with CM Punk, maybe get a win there, maybe not. If they lose, that's fine, because both their contracts are going to expire anyway. So Punk's morale will be reset. Without any further delay, let's confirm the match card. We'll go ahead and simulate the tag match. Punk and Edge do get the win over the King's Court. Because uh, I think the King's Court also had a losing streak going on. So that's why I pit them against each other. Pretty sure that's why I did that. Uh, we got Terry Funk versus Ric Flair. It's just a battle of legends. And it's Terry Funk who gets the win over Ric Flair. Uh, of course, with the Cruiserweight Championship scene, obviously this rivalry is going to end things. And it's the team of Shad, Matt Hardy, and Mick Foley who get the win. So the Hardy boys are done. Matt Hardy is going to go on to fight someone else. As for Jeff, uh, what am I going to do with Jeff? I don't know. Somebody, yeah, somebody left a comment on a previous episode saying like, oh, this is, I can see why SmackDown's ratings are in the toilet because you've got Jeff Hardy on the show, but Snitsky's getting a world title match. It's just, but then again, that's, that's the goal of this series is to give people who normally wouldn't get the opportunities, opportunities. Marcus Corvan gets the win over Sandman. And, uh, yeah, well, I don't know what I'm going to do with Jeff. We'll figure something out. And, um, there's this handicap match up here. Do I honestly even want to play this show? Not really. Not really. I kind of want to try to wrap this series up. Because as I've said before, I'm sort of starting to lose. Well, let's hope Snitsky gets the win. No! Well, it's fine. It's fine. No biggie. No biggie. Snitsky was supposed to get the win, but it's okay. Ashley. Oh. Okay, well, she's still on SmackDown. She hasn't jumped ship. So I suppose that's a plus. Although I do need to trade her out ASAP. So she doesn't jump ship. Because that'd be bad. All right, so let's go ahead. Ooh, okay, wait, how, how much time we have left? So five weeks would get me one, two, three, four, five. So that's not quite enough. Three months is probably too much. I'll just do the five weeks, because that's what I've been doing. So get them back. Yeah, this will just be a two for one episode. I know I could try to, because like, honestly, I don't even remember why I did the match card the way this is. I'm just not really feeling it, so we'll just let that week go. We, we skipped that episode, skip this episode, yeah. And this was four star, because we got, we maxed out that, that rivalry, which is pretty cool. 
What do we got going on? More contracts expiring. I don't need those messages. I don't need those. Let's see how their morale's doing. Is there a way that I can cheat the system again? Uh, nope. They're both actually happy. Of course, Sabu would be. He's tag team champ. So I'll go ahead and renegotiate him. And Corvon just got here, so... I don't need to cheat the system with them. Yeah, Finley, oof. Five losses in a row. Not looking good. Jeff, three losses in a row. Nitro, four losses in a row. Ouch. Uh, okay, JTG wants a title shot. Shad wants a title shot. Well, hey, they have similar interests. We could maybe make that work. And you know what? Nitro right now, he's in a position where I don't really know what's going on with that, um, what was I going to say? I don't really know what's going on with his US title, because uh, he's obviously going after the world champ in Mick Foley, so ideally, we should try to get the US title off of Nitro, so I think this week maybe we will go ahead and book some sort of a, a title match situation there. If I wanted to put another new rivalry together, I guess we could do like Ric Flair and Matt Hardy, because really Ric Flair, as far as clean cruiserweights go, are we really going to give CM Punk another cruiserweight title match? I feel like Punk kind of deserves better than that at this point. Um, yeah, Punk's just kind of around. He's just kind of, just kind of there. I guess we'll put, yeah, we'll put Flair and Matt together. We'll pair them up. Um, all the other rivalries are still, still sitting there, still checking out. Uh, okay, so we have Ashley, who's up to a 79. If I want to trade, because I was thinking of just trading her for Randy Orton one for one, because uh, I believe we have 20 superstars at the moment. So yeah, we got the 20 superstars. Our roster is full. So yeah, it would just be trade Ashley for, you know, go for just the one for one deal. I could go for Lashley just as a meme, because Lashley is the meme of this series. I forget who... Uh, somebody asked me, I forget, this might have even been on an older episode, uh, but I recently got a comment like, is Bobby Lashley the, actually it might have even been on the 07 GM series, all the comments I'm getting are blending together, uh, asking like, is Bobby Lashley the, the, the Chris Benoit of this series, we just want to forget about him, just pretend he never existed, perhaps, perhaps that is Lashley's role, and yet I keep bringing him back, so uh, how does that work, you tell me. Honestly, we might just go for Lashley, because really, who else? here looks at all interesting. I mean, really, at this point, nobody that I trade for is gonna have a major role except for Randy Orton. I mean, I I, I could trade for him now just to get it over with, uh, but then he's just kind of sitting around for a couple of weeks, not really doing anything. I want him to have a... Oh, well, wait. I know I have... I have a show coming up in St. Louis, Missouri. Actually, that might not be until... That's not... Oh, yeah, that's not till March. Um, so that's not gonna happen yet. Hmm. Yeah, let's just go for Bobby Lashley. Why not? Better to have somebody now than to just have a Ashley jump ship and completely ruin my hard work. So we'll do that. Trade accepted. So now we have Bobby Lashley. The meme... See? We're bringing everything back. We're, we're nearing the end of the series. We're bringing all the memes back. We got Randy Orton, a reform rated RKO. Bobby Lashley's back. Um, if Kurt Angle were around, I'd get him. Um, I'm not going to go for Triple H because, like, Triple H only really... His major contribution to the show is being the big bad heel to take down. And now that he's the WWE Champion on Raw, he's already sort of in that role. So there's no real need to go back and get him. Uh, I don't think... Are there any other recurring characters, recurring memes that could be could be brought back? I don't think so. I think Randy Orton's the last one. Yeah, not really. It's, it's just Randy. It's just, Yeah, because Umaga also, he turned on us like Kurt Angle, so to have him currently be the ECW champion, the big bad leading ECW, I mean, we've got our, we've got our rivals set up. We got Triple H, the big man. Oh, I didn't even look at the, the ratings from last week. Jesus Christ. Chavo and Kane, tag team champions. Who would have thought? Who would have ever seen that coming? Yeah, you got Triple H as the WWE champion. You've got, I'm pretty sure, Umaga still ECW champion. Oh, I didn't even look at the whole show. Oh, yeah, we're getting... We're dead. We're dead. It's over. It's done. We're done. Yeah, we are, we are in the toilet. Ratings are in the toilet. Yep, there you go. Triple H, Umaga, they're at the top. They are the champs. So there's really no point in trading for them. I'm curious, did we get Ashley onto the list because of how much I've been boosting her? Not quite. Not quite. And it doesn't look like Bobby Lashley's up here either. Okay. So now, 
we move on to another week, and I will just set up the card off screen, I guess. All right, so we've got the card set up, but before we take a look at that, let's take a look at the ratings for Raw and ECW. So it looks like Candice Michelle, is she a new women's champion? I actually can't remember the last time Raw had a women's title match. I think it's been quite some time since that happened. But they got a three-star show. Uh, out of curiosity, I'm going to check back. On okay, no, they did have one two weeks ago. So yeah, Candice, new Raw Women's Champion. Uh, good for them. Three and a half star show for ECW. Looks like our boy Randy Orton still not doing so hot. And Umaga is still the ECW Champion. He was able to retain against The Undertaker. And actually, huh, I don't see Ashley on this show. So they did not book Ashley this week. They must have given her a week off to recover all that fatigue that just seems to disappear when they move over to a different show. I don't know why that happens. Oh, I guess I should go over the card first. So we have just an exhibition match, Matt Hardy versus, or Jeff Hardy versus CM Punk. Jeff's on a losing streak. Punk was on a losing streak, but he got a win last week. So just jockeying for position, figuring out where they stand on the card. Then we got a Cruiserweight Championship match because Ric Flair, he's begging for a title shot. So he's going to get one. He's going to get Matt Hardy in singles action tonight. Then we have a tag team matchup. These two, the King's Court, struggling to pick up any victories. So they're going to take on the dysfunctional team of rivals, Edge and Snitsky. So, I mean, if they can't get a win here, then something something clearly must be wrong with them. I mean, I mean, if you can't beat Edge and Snitsky, who, I mean, are they even going to be able to get along? We'll see what happens. Then we got a six-man tag. Since, uh, since Johnny Nitro is going to be defending the U.S. title in the main event... Mick Foley, he's free to join up with his hardcore allies for the night. So he's teaming with the tag champs, Sabu and Sandman, to take on the team of Elijah Burkus, Marcus Corvan, and the newcomer, Bobby Lashley. Because really up to this point, Burke and Corvan are the newcomers. And so Bobby Lashley's kind of joining in. So we got the new, the new guard, the new sort of army coming in to try to overthrow the hardcore, the hardcore legends, the hardcore icons. So... We'll see how that matchup goes. Rivalry in place for Matt so we don't lose it. And then main event, United States Championship Fatal 4-Way. We got Shad and GTG, two men who want title shots, and Terry Funk who also wants a title shot. And Funk's kind of had this recurring thing with Nitro, so he can get one last shot at the gold. If he can't get it done here, well then, maybe Terry Funk should just, somebody should just kill him. Like, I don't know, he gets squashed by Bobby Lashley or something. I don't know what we'll, what we'll do. Let's see how this matchup goes. Hey, the King's Court finally get a win. So Edge and Snitsky, um, yeah, still building towards their eventual showdown. CM Punk versus Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy snaps his losing streak, gets a win over CM Punk. And I guess we can also simulate the six-man tag. Uh, and it will be... Oh, so it's Burke, Corvon, and Lashley getting the win over the Hardcore Legends. So even the world champ Mick Foley seemed to have uh, struggled a bit there. Perhaps next week we can have Bobby Lashley go one-on-one -on -one with the champ. But that's a big debut for Lashley, and I guess I guess we'll play both title matches. It only makes sense. It's cruiserweight championship title match time. I championship title whatever. And it's Ric Flair, one on one, with the defending champion Matt Hardy. So here we go. The nature boy. Oh, going for those knife edge chops of his. But Matt Hardy trying to answer back with a knife edge chop of his own. But Ric Flair not gonna let him not gonna let him have any of that is now it's Ric Flair who gets knocked over the top rope to the floor Matt Hardy so far looking pretty good as Ric Flair oh Matt Hardy dives to the outside but Ric Flair ducked back inside the ring so Matt Hardy crashes and burns and there's Ric Flair with another knife edge chop as he picks Matt, Matt Hardy back to his feet tosses him into the barricade oh but wait a minute Matt Hardy with the counter but Ric Flair is going to shrug him off. Ric Flair perhaps going to throw him back into that barricade. Going to try to drop him this time. And this time I think he's going to have a little bit more success. Matt Hardy face first off the barricade. And Ric Flair, nope. Matt shrugs him off. Matt shrugs him off at Ric Flair quickly. Ducks right back in after him. And lights him up with another knife edge chop. And now Ric Flair. Ric Flair, I think he's going to start to go to work on the leg of Matt Hardy. He's going to try to... Start softening him up for the figure four leg lock. As he's grabbed him by the leg, but Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy's going to try to shrug him off, and indeed he does. Creates that separation. 
I mean, that's the last thing Matt Hardy wants is to let Ric Flair start to go to work on the leg. Because the, as soon as Ric Flair can apply that figure four leg lock, it might spell the end of this match. And of course, Matt Hardy's cruiserweight title is on the line. The title that he won back at Armageddon in a, a six-man battle royal. Of course, he was able to win the title off of Chavo Guerrero on that night. His brother Jeff was involved in the match, CM Punk. So Matt Hardy, quite the stiff competition to win that Cruiserweight Championship. And so far, Matt Hardy has done a, has done a pretty good job hanging on to the gold. But tonight, going up against a crafty veteran like the Nature Boy, Ric Flair. Perhaps things could go a little bit differently for me tonight as Ric Flair, side rush and leg sweep, taken down. Matt Hardy, the man who will not quit, the man who ne has that never say die attitude. Matt Hardy able to shrug Flair off again as he tried to go for the leg. But Ric Flair, oh, got him. Just floored him with that kitchen sink knee to the midsection. And now Ric Flair. Ric Flair going right back after the leg once again. As Hardy, oh, Hardy caught the kick. Ric Flair sent spinning around. And now Matt Hardy, arm drag, takes down the Nature Boy. As now Matt Hardy, he tried to go for this earlier, but Ric Flair was having none of it. Ric Flair, Ric Flair is up on Hardy's shoulders. Matt Hardy with a massive powerbomb, high angle powerbomb. Ric Flair collides with a canvas and he goes back to the outside. Matt Hardy though, Matt Hardy's going up top. Matt Hardy up top. He could be looking to fly to the outside. Look at Matt Hardy. Well, he went for a moonsault. Went for a moonsault to the floor, but Ric Flair rolled out of harm's way. Rick was able to get out of dodge, and now Ric Flair. And now Ric Flair, he's got Matt Hardy on the outside. The Cruiserweight Champion is in trouble as Ric Flair. Ric Flair back to the leg once again. And Rick, I mean, that's been his, his attack, is go straight for the leg of Matt Hardy. Matt able to shrug him off once again. But Ric Flair, Ric Flair again. I mean, referee is up to a count of seven, so Rick's got to watch himself, got to watch the count. Count of eight as he's trying to pick the leg of Matt Hardy, but he's having no such luck. Ric Flair, oh, Matt blocks it again. Ric Flair's up to a count of nine. He's got to get back in the ring. And he had no choice but to get back into the ring. But now he's a sitting duck as Matt Hardy has the opportunity to go to work. As Ric Flair, I mean, he had no choice but to run back inside the ring. Didn't matter where Matt Hardy was, so Matt Hardy was able to just go straight on the attack. Ric Flair trying to oh trying to answer back, no such luck. Is now Matt Hardy. Well, ducks behind. Ric Flair off balance as the cruiserweight champion sends him into the corner. Matt Hardy with a clothesline, and now Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy plants Ric Flair with a face buster. And now Matt Hardy dragging him away from the corner, drags him to the center of the ring, drives the knee right into the lower back of the Nature Boy Ric Flair. As Matt Hardy's going to go back up top. Matt Hardy's looking to fly once again. Ric Flair down on the canvas. Oh, he's back to his feet, though. Back to his feet. Matt Hardy had to change game plans. So now Matt Hardy's going to bring the fight in close. Going to try to out-grapple him as he takes him down to the back suplex. He drops him right on the back of his head. Matt Hardy starting to build up that momentum. Starting to... Oh, I was going to say starting to turn things around, but Ric Flair the counter. Ric Flair the counter, and again... Right back to the leg, right back to the knee of Matt Hardy. Takes him down with a chop block. And Flair going right back after that leg yet again. That has been his MO, is target the leg. Try to cut down the foundation of Matt Hardy. Just continue to soften him up for the figure four. Is Matt Hardy... Oh, Matt Hardy able to counter, though. Ric Flair trying to deal more damage, but Matt Hardy with a DDT. Deals the final blow in that exchange. Now going for a submission hold, which, yeah, not a very smart strategy. Ric Flair's right there by the ropes. Of course he's going to get the rope break. Didn't even really have to put any effort into that. But Matt Hardy's going to go back for this. Matt Hardy trying to go back for this powerbomb. Perhaps a pile driver. No, he's going for the powerbomb. He's got Flair up on his shoulders. Matt Hardy drives him down again. Matt Hardy connects with another powerbomb. But just like in his match with his brother Jeff uh, a couple of weeks ago, Matt Hardy really getting pushed to the edge here as he goes off the top. Moonsault to the back of Ric Flair. Matt Hardy with a moonsault, a high-risk move. Flair trying to get to his feet. Not having much luck, though, as Matt Hardy goes back up top yet again. Matt Hardy, he's looking 
for another moonsault, another moonsault to the back of Ric Flair. You gotta be kidding me, is Matt gonna go up top again? Does he, well, Matt Hardy, Matt Hardy, I don't know what he's thinking here. Going for the third, can he hit the third? Gets him with it, no, he didn't get him. He did not hit the third moonsault, and I don't think, I think it's maybe the leg, the leg, he's not getting the full aerial leap on that jump. Ric Flair has been targeting that leg. I don't know why Matt Hardy keeps trying to go to the top rope. It's just a display of pure grit, I guess. Refusing to show any signs of weakness in the face of this, in the face of this tremendous encounter with Ric Flair. If Matt Hardy's gonna win, he wants to make sure that he goes out there and wins completely. He doesn't want to win off a of technicality. He doesn't want to have to compromise on his offense. He just wants to keep going on the attack. Is Matt Hardy with the counter. Ric Flair, not going to deal any... Well, okay, Matt Hardy took a step back. Not the approach I would have gone for, but I guess that's why I'm not a pro wrestler. That's why I'm just here at commentary. Because for one way or another, Matt Hardy's assault has worked. There's a count of two, but Ric Flair kick out at two. As Matt now, oh, low blow, low blow by Ric Flair, low blow by Ric Flair, and there's a poke to the eye, but the referee's not counting it, the referee, I mean, that was straight in, straight in the referee's face, but the referee not counting the low blow, the blatant low blow by Ric Flair, I mean, come on, if that doesn't warrant a disqualification, what will? As now Matt Hardy, I mean, Matt Hardy, he's, he's in trouble right now, he just suffered that low blow. And Ric Flair, Ric Flair is gonna make him pay for it. Oh man, now just raking the back. Just raking the back of Matt Hardy. As Hardy whipped into the corner, Ric Flair. Ric Flair is gonna put him up top. And he's going up there with him, Ric Flair. What's he got in mind? He's got Matt Hardy off the top, sidewalk slam. Sidewalk slam off the top rope. And now Ric Flair, Ric Flair's got Matt Hardy in position. Matt Hardy's away from the ropes. Ric Flair with a little bit of flair. He's going for it. Going for the the signature move, the patented figure four leg lock. Ric Flair, the nature boy, applies the figure four leg lock. Matt Hardy, is he going to tap? No. Matt Hardy managed to break out of it. Matt Hardy somehow managed to survive the figure four. I mean, this is such a, such a close encounter right now. At this point, it's anybody's ball game. Ric Flair... Scoop slam takes down Matt Hardy. Oh, but Matt right back to his feet. I think it's really only going to take one more big shot to put this thing away. Oh, Matt went for a drop kick. Flair able to sidestep. Flair now kick. Flair with the axe handle. Knife edge chop. Oh, blocked. Matt Hardy blocked it. I mean, what's it gonna What's gonna happen now? DDT. DDT by Matt Hardy. Ric Flair. Ric Flair. Down on the canvas. Matt Hardy's starting to drag him. Could he perhaps be trying to set him up for a twist of fit? Oh no. Well, this certainly is not a twist of fate. Matt Hardy, though. Matt Hardy going to add some insult to injury as now he is going to turn this around and he is going to go for the figure four leg lock on Ric Flair. And now it's Ric Flair who's in trouble. Flair, is he going to tap out to his own submission hold? No, of course not. Flair trying to break it and Matt Hardy's already suffered enough damage to the legs. He's unable to hang on, unable to keep the hold. Flair now takes him down. But Matt Hardy's back up to his feet. It's back and forth right now, folks. Who's going to walk away with the Cruiserweight Championship? Flair countered. Matt trying to get him. Flair not going to let him have it. And Ric Flair again backs off. And Ric Flair back to the leg. The continuous assault by Ric Flair to continue targeting the leg of Matt Hardy. As Hardy back up to his feet. Flair though, knife edge chop. Ric Flair the knife edge chop and he's going to try to go for the figure four again. Is Matt going to tap out for the second time here? Is he going to tap out to the second figure four? Flair's already locked it in once. Matt's been lucky enough to escape. And now Flair's going to go for it. Ric Flair, he's got it locked in. The figure four, Flair wrenching back. Ric Flair, no! Matt able to break out of it again. Matt Hardy will not die. He will not quit. And now pile driver. A pile driver to Ric Flair. Matt can barely stand. As now Matt Hardy 
runs past the referee, goes up top. Matt Hardy looking to go big or go home with a moonsault. He hits it right on the money. Cover on Ric Flair. One, two, three. Matt Hardy manages to retain the Cruiserweight title in one hell of a match. And there it is, folks. Ric Flair, he gave it his all out there. I thought he came close with that second figure four. I thought for sure he was going to take the Cruiserweight title. But it was not meant to be. Matt Hardy manages to survive, manages to hang on, puts away the Nature Boy, and his Cruiserweight Championship reign continues. And now it's the main event. United States Championship on the line. Terry Funk, Shad, JTG, and Johnny Nitro all going at it in a fatal four-way to determine the next United States champion. There's the reversal. And of course, what's interesting about this matchup is that if you're Terry Funk going into this thing, well, you gotta imagine that, you know, the hardcore legends cannot be on very good terms with with Terry Funk right now. So if you're, if you're Terry Funk, you're going into this basically knowing that it's, it's your last shot, your last chance, because if Terry Funk doesn't win here, Who's to say that he won't get kicked out of, he won't get kicked out of that faction? We'll hold the phone. Look at Shad, Shad going outside the ring by JTG. JTG baseball slides him out to the concrete floor. But that's not gonna get rid of Shad permanently as the big man back in the ring. JTG going to break up that submission hold, but that left him wide open for an assault from Shad. And now Shad takes down Terry Funk. Shad just looking to, looking to just level the playing field. Level the entire field. Take everybody out. So yeah, Terry Funk, it's now or never for him because if he loses, he might just be on the chopping block on behalf of the Hardcore Legends. And then where does Terry Funk go from there? That'd be an interesting development to say the least. As Terry Funk now delivers a clothesline to JTG, but there's Shad again. Shad just levels Terry Funk with a DDT. And now Shad, he's going after his former tag team partner. He's going after JTG. He just wants to make sure that JTG doesn't walk away with the United States Championship. I mean, Shad certainly had opportunities at the title in the past as well. Really, the only man here who hasn't had a shot at the United States Championship is JTG. JTG, however, has had opportunities in the past. Oh, God. At the, the Cruiserweight Championship, Shad just took out two men with a top rope spear, more so was able to connect with Johnny Nitro, and now JTG's back to his feet, and JTG hammering away on Shad with a Thez press. As now Terry Funk, he's going after the big man. Of course, now I think these men have realized that Shad is quite the formidable threat out there, so they're working together. JTG just launched himself outside of the ring to take out Johnny Nitro. As Terry Funk continues to go to work on Shad, and of course Johnny Nitro, he has been an impressive United States champion, do not, uh, oh, oh man. Terry Funk just grabbed Shad by the head, just grabbed him by the hair, and just planted him into the canvas. Terry Funk, his offensive style, it's not pretty, but it's effective, you cannot deny that. But Johnny Nitro, his current United States championship reign is, I mean, he's had one of the more impressive reigns in, in, the, in this series. I mean, he has been on fire. Oh, it's Shad takes down JTG with a massive double underhook suplex. But, I mean, Johnny Nitro, he's going up against the likes of of your Terry Funks, your, your Snitskys. Johnny Nitro, he's defeated countless opponents. Is now Shad, though. Shad with a fallaway slam. And if this keeps up, this may just be the end of that historic United States Championship reign by Johnny Nitro. I mean, Nitro, he certainly has been... And he's had an impressive presence here in the series. I mean, former World Tag Team Champion on Monday Night Raw in the 07 series. Former Cruiserweight Champion. I mean, John Nitro, the longest reigning Cruiserweight Champion in the history of this GM mode playthrough. And now, I mean, he's had an almost equally impressive United States Championship reign. Even going so far as to surpass that the reign of Umaga, who himself had a very dominant United States Championship reign. But will it all come crashing down tonight as JTG with a massive leg drop off the top rope? Oh, but Shad back to his feet. Shad unable to, or Shad not letting JTG put him away. As now Shad, oh, JTG's trying to resist, but Shad, Shad's just gonna straight up outpower JTG 
drives him down with the Fisherman Suplex. Wait a minute, covered by Johnny Nitro, covered by Johnny Nitro. Oh, that was close. Terry Funk got rolled up on his shoulders by Johnny Nitro, but, G uh, but Terry Funk just barely managed to kick out. This GTG and Shad are so fixated on each other. Terry Funk and Nitro continue to go at it now. It looks like the conflict's starting to break down a bit. This old oh, GTG with a running forearm takes out Nitro. Oh, Terry Funk gets caught with an atomic drop into a DDT by Shad. So a bit of indirect teamwork there, an unintentional teamwork on the part of Crime Time. But now Johnny Nitro. Johnny Nitro with the inverted suplex, or the gourd busters more like it, dropped him face first into the canvas. Terry Funk, Fez pressed to Johnny Nitro. Oh, he's gonna go for the cover, gonna go for the cover, but Chad able to make the save just barely. Oh, what a bulldog now. J JTG's just busted open Shad. Shad has been busted open, and JTG now, JTG going after Terry Funk, got him with a neckbreaker. JTG with a neckbreaker on Terry Funk. And now Johnny Nitro is going after JTG, trying to keep him at bay, but Shad, Shad the cover, Shad the cover. Shad's the new United States Championship, ever the opportunist. Shad picks up the win and the title. Well, who could have seen that coming? Shad picking up the win, capturing the United States Championship, but scoring the win off of the back, off of the hard work of JTG. JTG hit Funk with the neck breaker, but then Nitro, I mean, JTG started going after Nitro. JTG got distracted with Johnny Nitro, and Shad swooped in, saw the distraction, saw the opportunity, went for the cover on Terry Funk, and he got the three count. And now Shad busted open. Nevertheless, he's your new United States champion. And Shad is the first member of Crime Time to succeed as a singles competitor. Well, I would have thought that, like, if it was ever going to be Terry Funk's night, I thought this would have been the night. But he just did not live up to expectations. So, Shad, your new United States champion. Matt Hardy may have retained the Cruiserweight title against Flair, but Johnny Nitro, no longer the United States champion. His, his mighty reign has finally come to an end. I should make sure that I'm not... Okay, I'm not missing any contracts. So we can skip ahead to the next week. We had a bit of a two-in-one episode today. because uh, we, we did the two matches on the one show. We did no matches on this show. So, because, basically, I'm trying to figure out how I want to handle GM mode now that I'm trying to bring Universe mode back, trying to make my way to, uh, try to make my way to SummerSlam before 2K19 drops. So, because, <clears throat> because I did the two-in-one this episode, um, I think I might just have it only be the one episode for this week's GM mode, and then next week, maybe I'll be able to get the two in, um... Because I just got to make sure also that I finish this series up before 2K19. So I got a couple of things on my plate. And it's just figuring out how to balance them. I've been working on a schedule lately. Trying to structure my time better. And uh, I think I've been doing a pretty decent job at it. Um, but we'll see if I'm able to keep that up. Alright, so Nitro just lost the title. I'm going to go ahead and extend his contract while he's worth less money. Uh, Shad, new US champ. So I'll extend his. I'll go ahead and extend Matt's. Oh boy. Oh boy. Um, well, I guess I gotta go for JTG. Because I cannot afford to lose that rivalry. I've had too much too much build up for that rivalry. I can't just let it go now. Uh, we got Finley and we got Jeff. Uh, it doesn't look like I'm gonna have enough money to get them both. Uh, Jeff had a Cruiserweight title shot January 17th. Finley also had one January 17th. So I guess... It it could be either. Maybe I'll just let them both go just for the heck of it, because, like, neither of them are in a rivalry. Nothing's really going on. Uh, wait. Hmm. Actually, no, it's fine. It's fine. Just... But then is that going to affect Matt Hardy on the Power 25? Does it matter where Matt is on the Power 25? I don't think so. I think it's fine. Uh, let's just go ahead and delete all these. Fan support. I guess I'll check it. Yeah, we're still losing. Monday Night Raw. Oh, wow. Wow, because Foley and Funk both lost, they really took a tumble, and Edge is number one again. There's Sabu and Sandman, there's Elijah and Marcus, there's Crime Time, because now Shad's US champ. Got Hardy Boys both up on that list. Good for them, and Johnny Nitro, oh man, oh man, Nitro really fell. He's not even in world title contention, that's, that's bad. But then again, 
He is on a five match losing streak and he did just lose his title. So we should be able to turn that around fairly quickly. Like get him a win, he'll probably jump up to like six or seven at, at least. Um, so yeah, I think, I think we can make this work. We can get Nitro back up there as long as he's in world title contention by No Way Out, which, oh, we only have a week. We only have one week until No Way Out. Oh no. And it's in Los Angeles, California. That's Nitro's home state. Ah, no, no, this isn't good. This isn't good. We gotta do something. We gotta do something fast. Uh, so tune in next time to see if we'll actually manage to get Nitro in World of Weight title contention. Thanks, bye.